Hey Manta team, so for all of you guys that were asking me to show a recipe of the sea bass that I got in my vlog, here is the recipe I promised you guys. Today I'm taking you guys to Ivory Coast, yes, Cote d'Ivoire, and I'm making a cheque with grilled, oven grilled sea bass, fried plantains, and some vegetables. Bonjour mes amis Ivoiriens, mes amis Africains, je m'appelle Mansa Queen, je suis Gambienne, et bienvenue sur ma chaîne. Are you guys surprised? Well, don't be surprised. My dad is a French professor, okay? Okay, so we're gonna start with some plantains. And these are fresh, ripe plantains. And this, one of the stars of the show is a chicken. Yes, I love this. This is basically cassava couscous. That's, that's all there is to it. If you guys like couscous, you will definitely like this because it's like, how can I explain it? It tastes like gari couscous like gary couscous that's basically what it tastes like it has that little tangy taste like when you're eating gary and it's grainy like couscous so it's actually very good and it's a staple in ivory coke so this is my acheke and i'm using two packs we would also need some fresh tomatoes and these are freshly harvested tomatoes from my garden we're also going to use some cucumbers and I got two cucumbers and this is to make a little vegetable salad on the side. And we would also need an onion. I did not end up using the whole onion. I used about half of it. And the other star of the show is my sea bass. And as you can see, I have already washed it using lots of water and lemon juice okay so now i'm just gonna pat it dry with a paper towel to remove all excess moisture off of it so now our fish is all nice and dry we're gonna go ahead and prepare a marinade and for that i'm gonna be using some fresh habanero peppers this is gonna give it a good taste and we have green bell pepper this is half a green bell pepper we got some fresh garlic fresh ginger and I also have some chopped spring onions yes this is gonna give this fish a lot of flavor which we were looking for okay and then in the middle I got some crushed Maggie cubes I have some lemon pepper I got some smoked paprika this is gonna add to the color as well I got some rosemary and I got some freshly crushed black pepper. Yes, we need that intensity. And last but not least is my garlic herb seasoning. And over here, I have some olive oil. This is gonna help a fish stay nice and moist. And that's some fresh lemon juice. And then I got some distilled white vinegar. So now I'm just going to take all of these off camera, blend it, and I will be right back. <laughs> and ta-da! This is what our blended marinade looks like. And you guys, that fresh habanero is a must-have. And it just, it tastes so good. It smells so good. I wanted to eat this marinade by itself. <laughs> yes, so to that, I'm going to add some soy sauce. Yes, not a lot, just a tablespoon maybe just half a tablespoon yes I just went with half a tablespoon of soy sauce and this is gonna intensify the flavors and also give it a nice look when it's grilled and to that I'm adding my mom's favorite mustard yes her favorite French is yellow mustard and I'm adding about a heaping tablespoon of the mustard this all helps to add a lot of flavor when we grill our fish and I'm going to be grilling it in the oven of course today because we don't have time to be outside so we're doing indoors and it's perfect because it's fast and easy okay so now a marinade is all nice and done I've tasted for salt and it's perfect so we're gonna go ahead and wash our hands yes it is necessary and then we're gonna get ready to work with these bad boys and season them up yes baby <laughs>
you guys so i forgot a crucial step at this point i remembered that i had not put incisions on the fish so here i go with my cute little fish knife and i'm gonna put some real deep incisions on that fish because that is gonna help um get the fish cooked real faster and it's just gonna come out looking cute i love it and then we can also get the marinade incorporated within all those ridges yes it is important so i had to Grab my knife real quick and do that. And then our uh, fish is all nice and marinated. I try to go into all the nooks and crannies and get that marinade all over. And this is the final look. I'm just gonna cover it up and put it aside in the refrigerator, let it marinate while I get on with the rest of the ingredients. Okay, so next we're gonna start making uh, a chicken and I'm getting some hot water boiling in the kettle and the two packs of a cheque um ended up being about a little less than three cups almost three cups but just a little under so i poured all of it the instruction says to use the same amount of water in a cheque okay so what i just added was some salt to taste because we just we we don't want it to be bland so i just added some salt to taste and also to avoid any lumps, I'm gonna be adding some of my olive oil, yes. You can add butter if you want, but I prefer using the olive oil. This is gonna prevent any lumps in our chicken. So one great tip is to use less water and top it up as needed because you can easily rectify that. But if you put too much water in it and it gets all soggy, you cannot fix that. <laughs> so yes, I started gradually with um smaller quantities and i added more water as we went by okay so our water is nice and hot and boiling so i added some and i'm just gonna keep mixing it just keep mixing 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 this is really easy it's so easy and oh my god guys this is so tasty the first time i ate a cheque was um a trip that i took to philadelphia yes i went to philly with one of my friends and man the african community over there is so diverse it's so many liberians ivorians and just people from all over africa i had such a good time and yeah now i'm gonna put my mix a check into the microwave and cover it up with a micro microwave safe bowl and i'm just gonna put in five minutes cook it and then i would bring it out there we go nice and hot be careful then what you want to do will get your fork and fluff it out yes we're trying to avoid any lumps so you want to fluff it all out so i ended up using all the water that i had measured out which is about three cups of water the same amount as the acheke and i put it back in the microwave for another five minutes making it a total of 10 minutes and it was all done and ready and this is the final product. I'm just gonna transfer it into my bowl and get on with the cooking. And we're gonna move on to the plantains and here it is all nicely washed. Yes, you need to wash those plantains because the dirt from outside can easily get transferred while you were peeling it. So yes, I went ahead and washed it and I'm just gonna peel it and you can either choose to cut your plantains in regular like strips or just circles or cut it into cubes today i just decided to go with cubes mm, no reason just because it's it's easier for me to fry because you could fry more with the cubes because they're so little and that's just what i'm gonna do today and you guys can just sit back relax and let me do the work And voila, there we go. It's all nicely cut up and my oil is on the side. I'm just using some regular vegetable oil and it's all nice and hot. You don't want it too hot because then it's gonna get all 
burnt so I just want my plantains to have this beautiful golden brown so I'm adding it just right and you want to fry it don't overcrowd it because oh, um, then it's going to get all soggy and it just wouldn't come out right so I'm splitting it into two batches and just keep an eye on it plantain frying plantains is not something that you could just do put in the fire and then go do something else no it's going to get burned before you even blink so this is what I need it to look like this is perfect for me and by the way I don't let my plantains get too ripe if it's too ripe I don't like frying it because it's going to soak up a lot of oil so this is it has a little bit of green but not green it is not unripe it is very sweet so it's ripe enough but not soggy because I don't want it soaking up all the oil and I'm just I drain the fried plantains out and set them on a paper towel to absorb any excess oil that we have in there and I'm just gonna go ahead and fry the other batch and then we are almost done guys we are getting closer <laughs> and it's time to grill a fish and it's been marinated in the refrigerator for quite a bit now so i'm going to use my baking tray and i'm going to set it on top of the the grill because you want the space between the tray and the actual grill because you want any oil and moisture to drain out you don't want the fish to be soggy and just sitting in the moisture so I have that that's just a preference you can do it the way you prefer all right so I'm using the broil settings in my stove in my oven sorry and this is gonna give it a grill look so I'm not baking it I'm grilling it using the broil settings in my oven so once it's nice and hot, I'm just going to put it in there. And I usually don't time it, but fish don't really take too long to cook. So I like to put it in for about maybe 8 to 10 minutes. And here's what it looks like. It is pretty much done at this point, but we want it to get more flavors and more of the char grill marks because that's where all the flavors are at. And of course, I'm bringing out my hot pepper sauce. Yes, I have been enjoying this sauce. And I'm going to link the video somewhere on the screen and in the description box. And I'm going to add uh, about two tablespoons to the rest of our marinade. This is the marinade that I did not use. I'm going to add that to it and just mix it all up. And I'm going to use this as a glaze. Put it all over the fish. Guys, this is so, so tasty try doing this this would ensure that your fish stays really moist and it adds in so much flavor you would love this try grilling your fish halfway and then coat it with a mixture like this or any of your favorite mixtures you are so gonna love it it will stay nice and moist and not get dry while grilling now that the top part of the fish is nicely coated, I'm going to carefully flip it over to the other side. And mind you, sea bass is so oily, so I had no problems with it sticking on my grill, and the grill is also non-stick. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, and then I'm going to put it back in the oven, and this time for about 6 to 8 minutes, because the fish is pretty much done. I just want it to have the grill look on both sides, yes. And this is the end result. This is what our fish looks like, guys. Oh my goodness. This was so delicious. <laughs> it was so delicious. I had so much resistance. Man, I wanted to pick on this fish, but I had to take my thumbnail first. <laughs> so this is what it looks like. It looks so gorgeous, so beautiful. Who would not want this? It is so spicy, though. So you can use the amount of spice that you can tolerate. okay enough of the teasing i'm so sorry you guys <laughs> we're gonna move into the vegetables right now and i got my cucumbers so i did not peel this one i did not peel it but i'm gonna go ahead and take out the seeds and i sometimes don't do it but hmm, i just felt like taking it out today so i'm gonna go ahead and take out the middle part which has the seeds and i'm leaving their skin on 
for this one and I'm going to peel out the skin on the second one just to give it that variety and color and I'm just going to cut it up into cubes just like I did with the plantains yes this meal is so balanced because you get your fish you get your vegetables and you get your good carbs because um the chicken has less carbs because like when you're making gari a lot of the starch is already drained out so yes it is not as bad <laughs> that's my guilty pleasure yes and then i'm gonna cut up some tomatoes i took out some of the seeds and the tomatoes you can seed them totally if you want you can leave them on it's your tomorrow of preference and i'm also gonna cut them into cubes i'm also gonna do the same with half a red onion yes i'm just using half a red onion and all of this is going gonna go into a vegetables it's just gonna look like a salsa but without cilantro And there you go, our veggies are all nicely cut up. I'm just gonna use my fork and just mix it around. Just look at those beautiful colors. Yes, I love my vegetables. Mm -hmm. This is a must try. Guys, try this recipe and let me know. Mm -hmm. To my vegetables, I'm gonna add in some malt vinegar. Yes, you can use any vinegar of your choice. You can even use a lemon juice. Yes, I'm just gonna add in some vinegar to taste and some salt to taste as well and that's it that's all you need to put in these vegetables and it's done it is so healthy you can just eat this on its own i just love it sometimes i just eat that with the fish without the acheca even yes and i'm also gonna add some black pepper this is optional i thought about it last minute because i like my pepper yes so it's optional though you can choose not to add the black pepper and guys our meal is all done now i am ready to set the table yes our fish is looking so good can you guys see that <laughs> Yes, guys, I love me some African food. I am so proud of my motherland. I'm proud of my heritage, and I like to try out different stuff. Yes, get out of your comfort zone. Try out new stuff. Africa, we all know we're Africans, but we can be so diverse and just different in so many ways, and I just like to explore. Yes, I have been exposed to different African cultures as a very early age because my dad used to travel to a lot of West African countries while I was younger because of his job. Yes, so one love Ivory Coast, one love Africa, one love Mansa team. Thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you guys in my next video. Until then, stay safe. Bye!